Fred, can you pray, please? <laughs> yeah, that's what I love. Uh huh. <laughs> Let's get to that right now. Right now. We're gonna, gonna go right in. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know what gonna be? If you didn't remember, I was giving you the eye in my mind. Yo, for this one, can I pray? Yeah. Look, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I would love that. <laughs> that's refreshing. Lord God. <laughs> now, if everyone could bow their head, Lord God, if you are listening to this right now, I just want you to be the best version of yourself. I want you to have God in your present. Mm-hmm. I want to be driving force of who you are as an individual. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have like fate or stuff like that, like fate like a mustard see, Lord God. And if you have fear, just have a conversation with God. And it may not be the best, it may not be the greatest. But just pray. Mm-hmm. Take that time out to have a con- a conversation, mm-hmm. a top shelf conversation. Be honest. If you have to curse, curse. But Lord, we want this podcast to be where we just honest. Mm-hmm. We creating new beginning, new adventure. Yo, guess what? We giving season two a run for its money. Let's start this game. Amen. Welcome to Top Shelf, where we seek truth, opinion, perspective, and we seek solutions. Yo. Ben. Yeah. I'm feeling good. You know, we had a conversation on Instagram, and we were talking about surviving and living. Mm-hmm. I want to know how you guys are in regards to that. Do you think you're surviving? And surviving is like, I go to work, I come back home, I go to work, I come back home. But are you living? Um, I, I start. Um, I believe it's a little bit of both, honestly. Um, I think surviving is a part of the grind. Uh, and I think as uh, black folks, you know, we are constantly in survival mode. Like we definitely are just with us knowing about certain, you know, the parameters of what we can do and trying to move up in the world. Uh, I think for my life right now and then the uh, the season that I'm in is survival. But hey, remember that you are living this life. Take time to rest. Take time to relax. Do self-care. Do those things that you need to do uh, with your wife to help you to um establish your team you know the family for your legacy remember those things sit down and and make sure you're going out make sure you're vacationing live life and then you know the grind will always be there the survival part of it will always be there but the the living the life like uh the other day uh me and my wife uh we had sat down it was her first birthday recently and We sat down and she was like, you know what? I realized uh, throughout this birthday week of mine, I haven't taken many pictures. And so, and to which I repeated to her, I mean, uh, to which I responded to that was like, hey, like, maybe it's great you didn't take any pictures because you got to be there and you, and you had, and you got to live it, be in the moment. Right. And I think we sometimes get so fixated on capturing a moment that we don't be in the moment. Mm. So uh, that's where I am right now is just making time to be in the moments uh, and making memories and creating memories with friends, with family, with um, with people that I don't even know, like in connecting people. That's mm-hmm. where I am. What about you, Jeff? Um, for me, I would say I think every day we're like, surviving so we can live Mm. Mm. um you know it's some of us are still trying to figure out that balance in life where we're not just a slave to our nine to five or whatever Mm. our career is our job is or a slave to strictly just being a parent or a slave just being a spouse you know you're just sometimes we just get caught up in titles we forget who we are. And so now we've, we're just in survival mode and we're mm. not living. We, we lose ourselves in the matrix of the world. 
And so I think, like, like I said, some of it, I think we're surviving so we can live, but mm. we don't know how to get to that point. Mm. You know, I think of my dad who, um, he, his whole life was just surviving. Mm. He didn't understand mm. the meaning of living. And what I mean, living as far as enjoying. Right. When you when you live in your life, you live in your best life, you're enjoying the fruits of your labor, you're enjoying the small things, you're enjoying just not just existing, but you're enjoying living. And my dad, he just worked, work, 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 mm-hmm. never took a vacation or anything. He's retired now, but now he's at that point, he kind of want to start doing things. But I almost look at it not saying that his years that he spent working was a waste, but how impactful, impactful was it to his personal life as far as his, himself? Like I said, as far as like mm-hmm. living, you know, were you, is my dad just surviving or was he trying to survive so he can live? And I look at that as like, I don't want to mimic that. Like I, I want to be able to enjoy, like I want to be able to live. Mm. live life to its full capacity beyond the skies and the stars that we can see you're living you're not just surviving in this world because society will teach you that but it's like yo we gotta live absolutely Uh, how about you anthony I, i think for me i'm learning how to live not with just the people around me but I'm learning how to live with myself, learning how to live of who I am, learning how to be my own body of just being a black man in America, but just overall being a black man, but just living. And I think it takes time to un- or deprogram or unprogram yourself in regards to, okay, the bills are going to get paid. Your wife is going to be okay. Um, you still will have a job. But it's like in your head, your head begins to start playing with you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, do you have fear? Or where's your faith? Because at this moment, it sounds like you live in fear. And I'm always asking myself, can fear and fate live in the same boat? No. You saying No. Mm-mm. Why you say that? You can't have faith and you have fear. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have, it's, it's either going to be one or the other. Like you can't, if you're living a fearful life and you're always having anxiety and depression, you're concerned of every single thing, where is your faith? How, where are you making room for faith to step in? Fear is basically has taken over, you know, y- y- your life basically. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost going to cancel out faith. If you have faith, you have faith that, no matter what takes place, you're going to overcome it, right? Mm. So for an, I'll, I'll give an example. And a lot of times we subconsciously have faith. We don't realize it. Mm-hmm. When you get up in the morning and you're getting to go to work, you have faith that you're going to get to your job, right? You're not subconsciously thinking something fearful is going to happen, right? Like a freak accident, mm-hmm. you know, some final destination type of situation is going to occur. Subconsciously, so okay, I'm going to get up, brush my teeth, take my shower, hop in my car or hop in the train. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to my, um, get to work. Right. Finish my nine to five or whatever your schedule may be. And then boom, you're heading back home. You're living off faith without realizing that. Right. right. Once you start putting fear into the mix, oh, man, I don't know if I want to go to work. because I'm afraid that if I hop on the train, the train's going to crash. Oh, I don't want to you know, go to work because I hop in the car. I feel like I'm going to get into a freak accident. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It takes over. Now you start having anxiety. Mm-hmm. You got to you got to allow faith to cancel out fear. Operate how we normally operate in your day to day life when you go to a restaurant you you grabbing something to eat you don't know what those cooks doing back there mm-hmm. but you have faith that like the food's going to be good it's going to give me the, the nutrition that i need and you know your belly's going to be full and then boom you know what i'm saying so when you go on vacation you hop on that airplane you're going to you know to miami like auntie just came back from you know um not too long ago with his beautiful wife you have faith that you hopped on that plane you was going to land down at mia airport you're going to be chilling at your hotel you're going to be having a good time you're going to hop back on that plane fly back to new york or new jersey and then boom you operate in faith you didn't operate in fear we do it subconsciously but the moment we start putting fear into our into our mind 
this is where the game changes and this is where the enemy steps in because he wants us to operate that way. He wants us to live in fear. He always wants us to think of the worst case scenario and make it seem it's going to happen. Remember, the devil's a liar. All he do is lie. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's why I said like, you can't have faith and fear. You can't have truth and lies. You got to like, it's either the truth or it's either a lie. What are you going to trust in? To me, faith is truth. Fear is, is, is a lie that the enemy is going to tell you that this situation is not going to happen or you're not going to be able to come that situation depending on what you're dealing with. Yeah, I think uh, I have a different version of that. So it's, um, I think there's a, a couple branches of what fear is, right? I feel like there is, so under fear, there's worry. There is um, part of that is doubt. And then another part of that is just like a panic, right? I think doubt is the lowest level of it. And with doubt, I'll say doubt and uh, faith can't live together because the doubt and faith can't live together. Like, because uh, then it's like if, if there's doubt and then there's faith, then you like, okay, you're always going to be going back and forth. Always. No, ma- no matter what. Like if we take the story from the Bible of, of Peter stepping out on, of the boat with Jesus, right? Jesus told him to come out on the waves. And, and he was like, Peter's like, okay, I'm going to walk out. But there's a, there's a fear there, right? There was a, in his heart with everything, all, all of those divisions that it comes with, right? And then once he took his eye off of Jesus, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doubting now. That's the, mm-hmm. the lowest level mm. of fear. It's like, I'm not doubting that he's going to keep me on these waves, that he's going to keep me walking on this water, even though I've already taken steps. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's just different versions of that. For me, if it's applicable to my life, like um, this past week, it was my wife's birthday and I start, I, pl- I made all these plans, right? Um, when, it, when I was going to get her gift, uh, I made all these plans about like, okay, where she's going to uh, celebrate, all these different things in my head. Now, in my mind, I had a way that I saw that it was going to go, right? Didn't go the way exactly that I wanted. It was even better because there was a point where everything started falling down, right? And I was just like, people was not showing up. And then it was another part of like, I'm, I'm losing money at a point, like a whole lot of money on a deposit. And then I'm just like, my mind was all over the place, right? And I'm like, it got to a point where I was like, okay, let me remember who I serve. I serve God, a great God, right? And I got to let him take the wheel and be obedient because Everything is falling down right now. And if I continue to try to bandage it, it's not going to work out. So then I let him take the wheel. And by doing that, I just said, hey, God, I prayed. And I said, God, this is going to go how you want it to go. And it went better than I could have even imagined. She, Because in my mind, I'm like, she ain't going to like it. It's going to be terrible. Nobody's going to show up gonna be bad and then it's gonna she gonna say this is the worst birth it's so crazy how we count ourselves out before anything has even happened like and it it's like jeff said it's a thing that the enemy plays with our mind he jumps into our mind immediately and he's like yeah but maybe what you did won't be good enough he causes you to look at other things like so-and-so throw it through this birthday for so-and-so and it was to this magnitude you can't match that you know, he wants you to get further and further away from the truth, which is you've done all these things. You have it all together. Just in, and God is like, it just include me. I got you. I'll take I'll take the will. I'll take it, you know, and I, th- I just think there's a lot of divisions of it. Um, so like whenever I get on stage, I have a little bit of fear. I do have a little bit of fear. It's not because things are not going to go right. It's because it's like, it's nerves. It, it, part of that, that fear is like nerves. And it's like, okay, I can, I'm going to say this or I'm going to do this. And they're going to respond. I, you can never, ever tell how it's going to go until you get out there. Give God something to work with, as my wife says. I have a question. Mm-hmm. 
Do you fear being a husband? No. The reason why I say that confidently, confidently, excuse me, is because I know that God meant for me to be a husband. Like when I was younger, I grew up not seeing any marriage, any marriage, but my grandfather and grandmother, those are the only two people that were married in my life. My mother wasn't married. Um, there's a lot of other people in my life that just weren't married, you know, people that would claim the title, but weren't actually like, I, I didn't go to any weddings, never been to any weddings until I got older. Um, so I longed for it. I literally legit longed to be married. I longed for what it entitled and entailed watching all these different stories and write. I, I, uh, I used to, and I still do write poetry and just writing about it, you know, that day and what that looks like. I feel like God destined me to be in it. Do I fear being a husband? Um, no. Is there any parts of you that have fear? A little bit. Um, in regards to being a husband. No, no. Yeah. In regards to being a husband, a little bit. Um, there's the responsibilities, like, cause there's a lot for, for husbands out there. Like, the whole huge thing every time it's providing. And I don't mean that in a financial sense only because a lot of times people like providing, like, yeah, you got to hold your woman down money wise. You got to pay for everything. You got to, some people say you have to pay for everything. You have to do this. You have to do that. If you don't take care of your family, you're not a man. You know what I'm saying? All these different things. And it's just like, I get that. And that's definitely true. But at the same time, it's like, you're going to mess up. You're going to have bad days and bad calls as a man, as a husband, as a father. You're going to fail your wife. You're going to fail your kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a reality that I have planned. Like, I'm going to fail and I'm going to make it okay to lose. You know what I'm saying? My nephew, I was playing, we were playing a board game with him. He gets so upset when he doesn't win. And, and so we taught him how to lose because we know that in life, you're going to lose a lot. If you don't teach kids how to lose now, <laughs> they're going to be upset when they, when, they, when they get a part of life and figure out reality. I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Like, I think one of the, the fear, and I sometimes have a party in fear. And when you have that party in fear, mm -hmm. fate or God can't come because they don't want to even be a part. It's like you say, like, yo, who coming to the party? Fear, doubt, mm. depression. And it's like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to be there because that's not the environment I want to be in. Right. So when you're talking, it's like, I think what's happening is that you do have that party. And you do stay in that party and it doesn't allow you to grow. So you could be talking and you mm -hmm. could be talking about, yo, the fate is good. Come on the other side. Right. But you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other problem is that when you can't see it and you're a visual person, right. you got to touch it. You got to feel it. And it's, it, and it's something that you got to do by yourself. And I think my wife does an amazing job. I'd be like, damn, mm -hmm. you got some beastly faith. And I'd be like, yo, where you get that at? <laughs> <Will> you <get> <laughs> like, yo, can I get your faith? But I realize mm -hmm. I can't get her faith. You can't subscribe to her faith. You can't describe to somebody else's fate. You yourself right. got to do it yourself. Right. And it's like, oh, I want to get there. But then it's like, yo, it's a muscle. You right. literally got to work it out. Absolutely. Every day. And, and I didn't finish answering your question. The providing part of it is, am I going to have, am I going to be a better listener? And I am. Mm. For my wife. Um, the providing aspect is like, for me, listening, responding, uh, making sure that I can, because, you know, as a man, they expect us to fix things too. Like not, not only physically, but problems, kill that spider, the physical part, you know what I'm saying? All these different things showing up for your wife, you know, when she has things mm -hmm. like um, being there for her emotionally, mentally, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? As a husband, and like you were talking about before, about the part of when you can't see it, that's hard too. Because some husbands, they go through a state of depression. You know what I'm saying? And they don't feel it creeping up, but it hits a lot of husbands. It hits a lot of guys. Guys. Yeah. 
it's it's very sad. Like it could be a death, it could be loss of a job, it could be a loss of uh they don't feel like they have a purpose. They don't feel like they like sometimes they don't feel like they even are meant to be married. They could be going through that. Like, like it they like for those husbands out there, I just want to speak to the listeners. It's like if you're going through that and you need somebody to talk to, find somebody to talk to. Definitely, because it's 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 no. Really that's right, yo. Purposeful. I'm be honest with you. That shit get real, bro. Yeah, it does. It that shit gets real. Mm-hmm. Like you, like yo. Yeah. I don't know if this shit is for me, bro. Right. I, I don't know this. I'm mm-hmm. like, damn. Yeah. When people say they want to get married, don't get married. <laughs> but then when I look at my wife, I say, yo, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever done. Absolutely. I, I remember someone asked me because our two year anniversary came up. Um, has come up. Thank you, thank you. And uh, what you call it? I said it's the most wonderful roller coaster in the world. And I'm doing it with my wife. And that's the thing. That's the most beautiful thing. But that joint gets hard. And I think we, hopefully, we do a great job um, being a community and saying, oh, bro, um, pray for me about this. Or, bro, can you help me? Like, because... I, I'll be honest with you. I don't want to do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to do marriage by myself. I really want a community. I just want people around me because I need to know, like, am I, even if I'm not doing a great job, I just have somebody to tell you, tell and say, oh, what you think about this? I think, I think people need that. I, I, and I'll be telling my wife, like, Tell me I'm doing a good job, but t- tell me something. Mm-hmm. Because we as men, we, I, for me, my perspective, my opinion, my truth, I think men need that. Let me Just ask, the affirmation. I want to ask Jeff this question. Um, as someone who has been married before, like, um, like the things that you maybe have went through mentally, um, do you feel like it included a lot of faith? Uh, was there a lot, was there, did you have to fight through a lot of fears? And um, what, was there a person that you could talk to in your corner as well? As far as. I know as, that's three questions, my bad. <laughs> so you talk as far as like, like after, uh, like, like, do like once like, I got my divorce? Yeah, I, I want to say when there, when there was, or was towards like, the end. Towards the end? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, well, what I what I did was I just I'll be honest I I see God a lot during that time, um to try to get clarification to try to get clarity, you know I had I had amazing people in my corner that I can actually go to, to have different conversations, different perspectives, just kind of make sure that I wasn't bugging I wasn't overthinking. Um the the the, the, the thing is that you want to always make sure when you're in those situations that you are seeking someone who is not biased you're seeking somebody who is going to give you the truth they're going to give you clear facts and wisdom they're not going to input fear into your spirit Mm -hmm. right they're going to give you faith whether if it's like it's okay to walk away if this is a a toxic marriage right it's okay you got to bounce back. You'll find the right one. God will bless you, right? Or it could be like, listen, it could be faith in this aspect of it. Fight for your marriage. You know, mm-hmm. put God in it. Things will overcome. So you, you just want to make sure that you have somebody who's going to give you sound wisdom. And again, that's not biased. So for me personally, you know, I had those things. And it, and, and it, it helped me out through that process. And even afterwards, as, as a divorcee, a lot of times, since we're speaking about faith and fear, when you become a divorcee, you could build up a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, never, I'm never getting married again. Gotcha. I'm mm-hmm. cool. I'm good. I don't want to deal with that type of you know heartache, especially if you were in a marriage. And I'm not specifically talking about mine, um, where if there was, let's say, infidelity or if it was a you know mental, physical abuse. Again, I'm not saying that's what happened in my marriage. I'm speaking in general terms to be clear. That can psychologically give you fear, mm. even just dating. Period. If you're out there in the dating world and you've dealt with, like, if you're a, 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 a woman and you've had so many numerous bad experiences dating, 
you be like, you know, I don't know if I want to like date because men are crazy. That's fear. Mm. You don't have, you're not really having faith because Anthony alluded to, you, you can't touch it. Right. So we equate to having faith stuff that we can touch and physically see. Right. Um, so if you've had numerous ab- amount of bad <coughs> relationships, you're going to kind of have that fear. Like, listen, every relationship that I touch, every relationship that I saw was bad. So I, I have fear in that a good one's not going to exist. Mm. Faith is going to tell you otherwise that, yes, you may have physically touched bad relationships or seen, but faith is going to tell you, because God tells do not fear, that I'm going to bless you with the right husband. Or I'm going to bless you with the right wife. You know what I'm saying? Don't allow what the world describe as what fear is or faith is, what the word says, not the world, the word. You know what I'm saying? The word tells us, you know what I'm saying? Do not be anxious of anything, but we pray and petition. Um, allow Christ Jesus to guard your hearts and mind. So we, we something to that. <laughs> but it, it basically, it's alluding that don't be anxious about anything. Fear gives us anxiety sometimes. You know, fear makes us kind of like, you know, in this mindset that mm. I don't even know how to function because I'm, I'm always thinking the worst. But if we look at it this way to kind of keep it simple, and I think that's the best way to do it, start small when it comes to your faith. When we go to work, I'm going to go back to the using a work environment. When we go to work, we know that what every Friday, every Thursday or whatever your payday is that that check is going to clear, right? That's faith. You can't touch and see that paycheck yet, but you know it's going to clear in that account. Mm -hmm. You have faith without thinking about it. So you kind of look at the small things that you cannot see and you build off of that. You know what I'm saying? And you'll see your faith starts to, faith is as a mustard seed. You start seeing it grow and grow and grow and grow to a point, just like the Bible says, that faith is as a mustard seed, you can be able to move mountains because you're allowing that faith to take over. So that's what I did with myself. So where now it's like, as a divorcee, I'm not afraid to date, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I could have used my past and use it as fear to say, yo, I'm good. I'm not dating no more. I don't care to date. I don't care to, you know, to meet anybody because of that bad experience. But my faith tells me otherwise. Mm. Yeah. You said something, um, Fred, you said something just a while ago that made me think about something Garza, when Jeff was talking. Like, you had to push through what you saw growing up and you wanted to be a husband from a long time. Mm-hmm. That was fate at that moment. Because you could have had a fear of like, nah, I see too much broken, bro- brokenness at this moment. How did you get to that level? I would say um, just knowing that there was greater and knowing that it was possible. You know, um, when you, I think one of those things is like when, when you watch fiction, when you watch a whole lot of movies and stuff like that, you'd be like, oh, okay, that's, this is a fantasy. They don't actually they are not actually together, but you could see that that might happen in the world, in a, wow. in a world, right? And then you walk around and you look at couples. You're like, okay, they're together, they're together, they're together. But to what extent you start looking at hands and stuff like that, and like, okay, they have wedding bands on, or they have this, that, and the third. Um, and they are a family, you know? Um, so I think it's one of those things where you continuously hold that uh, because I think it's a belief and it's a dream too. Like I had a dream of having a family. Like all like me and my brothers and sisters, we don't have each other's last names. So it's like I I want us to be in, not to say that we're not family, not at all. We are close, beyond close. We were born and raised together. So um, and last names don't mean anything, but. I start seeing that and I'm just like, dang, I do wish because now I have to give an extra, spl- uh, extra explanation, excuse me, as to why to, to people. And then it felt kind of like and it, people were making it an embarrassing thing. But at the same time, I was like, I'm not really embarrassed because I love my brothers and my sisters. You know what I'm saying? So but that uniformity, though, that mm. is what I want from because on my father's side, um, I'm the last way to carry on the name really yeah i found out uh, because my cousin maurice passed uh, a couple of years ago um from a gunshot wound and him and me were the last two on our side we have 
cousins in the South. So we don't know, like in Tennessee. So we don't know the extent of how many of them have the name or who got married and everything like that. We just know in Kansas City, on our side, me and him were the last two to carry on uh, the call your name. And so I'm like, that means volumes. So I mm. have to definitely continue this legacy on. My dad has made it, been adamant of like, I'm not having no more kids. I'm not doing nothing else. You know what I'm saying? It's on you. The ball is in your court. So that's part of it. And the the bigger part of it is just, I want to have a family reunion, Anthony. I've never had a family reunion. <laughs> so we, we had a conversation the other day in right. regards of the family plan. Right. And I was like, how do you even start a family plan? Like a family plan can be the insurance or the family plan can be, okay, um, having retreats or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Like I really want to know because I've always heard this family plan and things of that nature because my wife and I were, we're at an age where we got to start thinking about our legacy. We got to start thinking about who we are or how we're going to form together. So now it's like, okay, how do we start? Where do we start? Because at this moment, no one has passed on information to me. So I can't look left and say, yo, you got a family plan? Oh, you know what? Let me look right. But I'm like, oh, snap. No one around me has a family plan. Mm. So you would, what I would suggest is it starts off with you and your spouse, you and your mm -hmm. wife, right? And you guys, at, what is our goal as a family, right? Whether if it's kids, whether if it's we're vacation every year, whether if it's we're buying multiple property or starting a business, you know, whatever it is, right? You kind of get an idea what you want as a fan, what is going to be the Thompson legacy, right? What's going to be the Collier legacy? What's going to be the Moore legacy? What is that, right? And then you start doing your research and seeking. And then I always believe in mentorship. You have a mentor who's going to be there that's going to help guide you guys, right? Mm -hmm. On the family plans, that legacy that you're trying to leave. I think sometimes you guys know me. I always say, let's go try to keep things simple, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we kind of make, and because it's the world, there's so much that goes on and it's like, yo, we, IG doesn't help because we see this family doing this or this person's doing Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Do but I think if we simplify it and just figure out, okay, what are we doing? And then we just go from there. Absolutely. Like, okay, this is our family plan. Like, again, it goes back to, it does somewhat tie into faith and fear. We don't, we're not going to have fear on how to set up our family plan, right? Because we can make mm -hmm. it seem like it's overwhelming. We have faith that we're going to set our family plan. This is what's going to be, this is what's going to be our legacy. And this is how we're going to tackle it. So mm. we're in unison as far as what, what are we setting up? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we're, and we're going to strictly focus on that. Just like when you have your career path, when you're going to college, you're like, okay, I want to be an engineer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an actor. I want to be a comedian. I want to be whatever it is. You have that plan. Okay, I need to go to this school. And I'm going to have to take these classes mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to get my bachelor's and get my master's, you know, whatever it is, right? To get to that goal, you have a plan, right? And then you just, you stick with it. And you know that if you follow these steps, you're going to get it. You have faith in that. You don't have fear like, oh man, if I fail this class or that, you don't operate in that way. Like in our previous episode, we had an amazing Shanique where she set goals on top of goals on top of goals. Right. So she had crazy faith. And at a young age, she has accomplished a lot. Why? Because she had faith. She operated in that. She had a goal. She said she had a Shanique plan, right? So now, obviously, you know, when that time comes and she settles down and she gets married, she's now her and her, whoever her future husband is going to be, they'll start their family plan. But because they already kind of laid out the ground, she already laid out the groundwork, she knows how to do that. And I think it's like, again, we make it simple. What are our goals? What are we trying to do? And we just build off of that. You know what's crazy? Uh, Jeff made me realize it's like, uh, I love when he touched on a part of like, are we going to go on a vacation, right? Like my wife told me the other night, like a family never really went on vacation. because Their father was always scared. Father, mother was scared. And I think for our parents and the parents behind them, their family plan was like, we just going to provide for the kids. That's the family plan. Make sure they have food, clothes, water, uh, education. 
and that's that's it we we uh, fun is another thing like that we don't really have time for you're surviving there you, go. I, you know it's so funny like i asked my dad like right. why are we never on a cruise son and he told me he was being real i couldn't afford it wow and i used to ask my mom the same thing like I didn't get on a, my first plane ride was when I was 19. Wow. I was like, and it was because our church was going to a conference in Detroit. And, um, and I was like, but my mother has still to this day never been on a plane. So it's like one of those things where it's like that fear, you let your fear uh, be greater than your faith. And I'm not downplaying my mother at all. Not at all. It's just one of those things where it's like, my mom came from a different time where yeah. it was like, yo, I got to provide. I have to get this done and this done, you know? So, so I want to, um, so the people who's listening, right? And so they're hearing this amazing conversation regarding <sighs> faith and fear and just our own personal experience. And so, I, 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 you know, we pride ourselves as a podcast, obviously speak truth, our truth, our opinion, perspective, but we do pride ourselves as far as being um, believers. and mm -hmm. we trust in God and what God does for us. So you always want to, you know, if there's any kind of way, we always want to give biblical context. So I have some scriptures that, you know, for anybody who's listening, who is living in fear, mm -hmm. who is fearful and just not sure on how their day-to-day -day is going to process. And, you know, they're anxious about everything. Um, so I have, you know, and I, I said this Bible verse earlier on, but I'm going to repeat it again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God mm -hmm. and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Yes. That's in Philippians. And I also want to read another um, scripture from Isaiah. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will upload you with my righteous right hand. And that's in Isaiah. So meditate in these scriptures. And there's so much um scriptures that you could actually lean on um when they regarding faith and fear and that will help you that helped me out a lot because i'll be lying saying that i every day i operate in strictly faith i do have crazy faith but again the enemy could creep in and, and kind of try to whisper his lies into your in, in your ear into your mind and you can start believing it but it's why you go back into the word not mm. to the world the world will make us fearful right the pandemic you know absolutely with COVID, mass shootings you know the economy it's going to make us fearful but the word just like what i was just reading the word is going to tell us to have faith so i just want to encourage our listeners to meditate on that psalms 91 is another amazing one that you can actually read it, it's a, impactful in so many different ways to read psalms 91 um, but I definitely encourage everybody just to focus on the word, not the world. Wow. And um, wow. Because you just, I'm, I'm here, but as I'm here, I'm like, my spirit is just going crazy because I'm like, yo, I really got spiritual brothers. And I'm just amazed how you guys are like, scriptures or stories or faith and i think what i'm i'm thinking about is like yo can we go on retreats or can we go on vacations together and start that process like us going on cruises with our family mm -hmm. and us doing our like a, a annual game night or annual what's that called like when they do like kickballs and things of that nature like tournaments yeah tournaments and stuff like that even though the thompson's gonna win but <laughs> But us being he has faith, he has. <laughs> <laughs> over faith. The call your but zone us leave. be us being the first chapter. So when our kids begin to get in that age and mm -hmm. saying, "Wait, my parents went on went to Greece or um, there's the Moors and the Thompsons. They were always around us mm -hmm. because why? You begin to say, you know what? We didn't see it growing up." So us being top shelf, us getting us experience, right. us master what we're talking about. Is let's there, not us be just talk, 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 right. but let's us be actionable. 
Right. It's, How do you guys feel about that? So you're talking about, I'm sorry, cut you off. No you worries, bro. So it's like, you're talking about going back into the village uh, mindset. Correct. Where there were people around. And I was actually talking to some people about this. I was a part of a project called Do You Know Black? It's a trivia game show uh, by some black creatives of, that uh, they basically... It's a trivia game show uh, with black uh, history facts, Love all it. of that. And so I'm talking to, with some um, some brothers and sisters of mine, and uh, we were just talking about our history. We were just like, yo, we need to get back to this. Uh, we were talking about a part of history, uh, I think, of, about Levittown. Mm. Levittown uh, and how it like they asked us the question, would you move into... A neighborhood that you're not wanted in this day and age and and they put the question um in terms of education you know and like what if they had the best education and all of those things and and, and another family that were friends of yours came in to move with you and then people just brought out some amazing conversation and and they were just talking about how the village was so necessary and we need to they talked about the how one girl said, one woman said, um, it's not about going into a neighborhood that you're not wanting. It's about we need to stop running away from the neighborhoods we have. Exactly. Because a lot of times, um, not a lot of times, now we know gentrification is happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our white counterparts are making us sh and showing us that the worth in our neighborhoods. Our, we have gold around us. Even in Brooklyn now, it's been built up. Like, uh, and that's no shot to, you know, our, our uh, Anglo-Saxon brothers and sisters. <laughs> but I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's apparent. And uh, more than anything, we just need to, we do need to do what you said. Like, we do need to have those people around us. Like, my grandfather used to show me pictures of, like, who them people? Oh, they, they used to hang around your grandma and me. And they helped raise, you know, your mama. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, where they at now? Oh, they, they still around. You know, ask your mom about them. And I, I think it's great to have people around you because that's the village, man. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you down? Yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm more Jeff, than you down. Jeff, you down? All right. Say no more. Because <laughs> I think, like I always say, man, like, I love a good experience. If anybody knows me, I love for you to have a good experience. And I think my Angela said the best is, it's not how you show up, but it's how you made somebody, how you made somebody feel. Mm -hmm. And that's so important to me is how you feel when you came into my home? Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you were around myself or my wife? Because I really want to be in an ambassador of God. So I want to be able to know that if God was right here, he, will feel, he, he would definitely feel comfortable to sit. And say, wow, these are my sons. Mm. And they're holding up my name and they're holding up my image mm. respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> and your house shall be called a house of prayer. Mm. Yeah. Yo, yo, like I said, we gave them fire after fire after fire. So please do me a big favor. Just open up your Bible. And like Jeff said, an amazing, those scriptures, find an understanding or get back to God's heart. Try it. Try it this week. It's not going to hurt you. But thank you. Thank you for being a top shelf village. And always remember, self-care is the best care. We out. <laughs> we outside. <laughs>